All right, we got mail bags everywhere from Timu, so uh, stick around and we'll show you what we got. All right, we've got some uh, some stuff coming in from Timu. We're gonna take a look at it. Uh, this is uh, hurry up and click a free click on a free something, and this is what I clicked on. Uh, and this is a peel bottle. All of these segments come apart and just a little container to put pills in. Uh, I, I now have to take many pills in the morning and many pills in the evening, so a single pill bottle is not sufficient. Uh, but grab a couple of these for day and night or whatever, and I think they're pretty good. But as a, a matter of fact, now that I'm thinking about it, this would be a awesome pellet holder. To pack with you uh, if you're going hunting uh, or just uh, what just going target shooting I mean you could get several even 30 caliber you can even get some I don't know if you'd fit some of my 45s in there but 30 caliber 35 for sure uh, as well I believe uh, not very many you probably get one two three four five six you probably fit about six 35 caliber pellets in each each one so, five, 10, 10, 10. so about 41 pellets which is more than enough if you're going to just you know go out hunting but if you're going to go plinking you really need more than that in my opinion uh 30 caliber you'd get more and of course when you get to 25s uh, and then start hitting 22 caliber and 177 caliber this would be perfect for 177 you'd have more in here than what you needed for 177 so uh and, uh, there's more than you more uses than just for uh peels so that's the first item come in i don't know that we're going to do any kind of a review on that that was just a something that happened type deal so okay now this i do not know what it is and this says it is a nail polisher model b01 uh no clue. Uh, maybe something to get by customs cheaper. Again, from Timu, but it is not a nail polisher. Although I still can't child pure proof packaging. Although I still can't figure out what it is. Uh, now this came in damaged. Excuse me. You can see the the legs on the. The little chip are all bit cockeyed and all that good stuff. The uh, the socket, the legs are all bent up, which, to be honest, I don't even think I would waste the socket on this if I can, you know, fix those legs. I'll use that somewhere else because it's not like the chip will be pulled off and replaced with an upgraded chip. Uh, so you got a bunch of. Uh, 4148, I think, diodes, uh, multiple resistors. Uh, I think these are kind of cool. Little uh, little red buttons on there. I, I doubt they light up. It'd be cool if they did, but I don't think that's the case. And you got uh, a little eight segment lead that was. They tried to put on some, uh, protective, I don't know, <laughs> but it didn't work. They didn't survive. Uh, I don't, I don't even know if those can be straightened out, but I've got other ones I can use in place of it. A little buzzer. They're, of course, flattened out too. And in the circuit board. Kind of tells you everything. And instructions, I guess more why I pulled this out to talk about uh, at all is the instructions. They really, really surprised me. Uh, and I haven't checked the uh, accuracy of what they're saying, but uh, welding precautions. Resistors are not divided into positive and negative poles. When welding, capacitance uh, value must be distinguished. The color ring 
of 10K resistors is brown, black, red, and brown. The color range of 360 ohm resistors is orange, blue, black, black, and brown. 100K is brown, black, black, orange, brown. The black ring end of the 1N4148, yeah, 4148 uh, diodes corresponds to the white wire end of the board. The buttons are not divided into positive and negative. The chip and socket correspond to the notch direction marked on the board. In other words, you've always got a notch on a IC. Like uh, if you look here, don't pay no attention to that, but up here is indicative to being, um, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it, it, but right here that's uh, pin 1 and it is marked by the tiny indention up there in the corner so that is telling you pin 1 now this little notch up here I'm not 100% sure but it's usually up there by pin 1 I, I don't know for sure if that's anything uh, you can match it to actually the notch if you match this notch to the one on the board then you're definitely going to have pin 1 on pin 1. Now this board is not marked as pin anything. <clears throat> so a lot of times you're going to have this is a classic outline of a uh, IC on a circuit board. And then usually you'll have a 1 like right there by pin 1. And so you can be sure that what you have marked with the indent here is pin 1 is on pin 1 and it's marked pin 1 but in this case it's not but you can just take <coughs> excuse me I got a lot of chest congestion for some reason <coughs> so the uh, outline of the on the circuit board actually matches that of the IC so a little bit of useless knowledge which I'm kind of full of all of it so that's uh that's the this <laughs> says uh, eight way answering machine <clears throat> which I don't think that's any kind of an answering machine but my guess is this is some kind of maybe a random number picker or you know I don't know if it is some kind of a random number picker then uh, maybe that could be incorporated in the giveaway <laughs> we just uh, hit a button and randomly select a series of numbers I don't know, rattling off, long work day, long travel, 200 miles, driving kind of wears on you, <clears throat> be doing that all week. So uh, that's the board, uh, It's I don't know what it is. When we actually put it together, we'll, we'll figure out what we can do with it. But the purpose of the board is actually uh, not, It's I think the intent of it is really soldering practice. But I'm not practicing soldering, but what I'm going to do is use this board as a real world example whenever I do the soldering iron um, test between each of the different uh, corded slash corded cordless soldering irons and uh, see how they do actually doing boards because this is this is kind of some some really small it's not surface mount stuff but some really so, small soldering and what most people would tend to be doing with these soldering irons anyway so we'll see how it works with that all right, this is a quick one. Uh, this is a 240 watt power delivery, 8K, 60 kilohertz display output, 40 gigabits data transfer, um, PD 240 watt, 8K, 40 eMaker intelligent chip, USB 4.0. So. I don't know. I, I, I may try to use this as my uh, my data. I'm mean, not my data. My uh, power cable for my um, soldering irons. See how well it works. Uh, I don't know if it'll actually. I don't know. It doesn't say PD 3.1 on here, so I don't know if it'll actually do the 140 watts for PD 3.1. But we'll find out together. Okay, this one's going to be a, a review on this one, so I'm not going over a bunch of details, but it's another lapel mic, and I think I may have another one. Um, so I'm trying to see what's out there. I've been using the Zeal Sound, 
and that's what I'm using right now and it seems to be doing fine I mean the audio sounds good to me but I'm half deaf so you have to tell me uh, but this is a Cynixon or Sensen or I don't know how you would pronounce that <clears throat> but uh, we'll give this a shot and see how it does okay so this right here I'd really like to have the red one but I don't know I didn't get it I got this one and hopefully uh, hopefully at some point maybe I can I can do the red one uh, I'm gonna look at this one a little bit here for a second uh, and I'm still it's going to be part of a review with a bunch of circuit board clamps but this is a circuit board clamp it's very heavy but I'll show you why in just a minute this is a K22 Pro Mingxing maybe uh, MJ Mingxing technology I don't know like I said, and, and also this case has got a lot of weight to it. It's kind of fancy. Yeah, it's got magnetic closers. Probably more fancy than it needs to be. Uh, do a, a crappier case and make this whole thing out of aluminum. Which, nah, that wouldn't be a good idea. Make the whole thing out of aluminum except for the clamp jaws. I don't know what this material is. But what the weight's coming from is this is metal, this is metal. Your, of course, your screws are metal. Uh, um there's a metal plate on the bottom which is nice these feet are silicon rubber I, i'm pretty sure that's silicone but they're rubberized feet uh, hopefully they stay on there and don't come off because that would be perfect on this silicon mat they won't there won't be a whole lot of movement on there uh, i've got to really put pressure to move it and so you you got an area that you could put a square uh circuit board which this is like just for example here. And so you got the, the piece on there and it's kind of square. Now I can pull it out, I didn't clamp it very tight. But it's uh, you can clamp square circuit boards in there, work on them. You've got a bunch of different profiles individuals which i think the red one's got a full clamp goes across that's why i would like it but uh this one right here you can uh you got a lot of cutouts for different size and uh, form factors of circuit boards teeth uh just a lot of ways to clamp circuit boards in now another thing that is very good in my opinion is these aren't these aren't rigid they've got some play in them and usually in my experience i mean you got precision vices on uh, mil uh milling machines and stuff like that that you want no give and they've got to be perfectly parallel with one another to be usable but in something like this right here it's got a lot of functionality machined into it for different form factors of boards and so you got a little bit of play if you've got a slightly triangular type board you've got a little bit of give here to, to compensate for that and so I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good in my opinion this material and this material right here seems to be layered of some sort it really reminds me and I forget what it's called but like uh, a lot of knife handles and uh, gun handles grips and stuff like that there's a process where you can take and put a piece of flat cloth down put glue on it another layer of cloth glue on it and you build that up to a certain thickness and compress it and let it dry and then when you machine that it's got a layered texture to it uh, but that that's kind of what this reminds me to and I don't know if you can actually make it out I'm gonna slowly turn it so maybe you can see the transitions in the layering uh, but both the top and the bottom are both layered it, this could be some kind of I don't know some 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 type of rubberized because it does it feels hard but it doesn't feel like plastic I, I can't explain that it's almost like and you've got a, a texture to this right here so it may be some kind of 
I don't know, some form of layered something. I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I really have no idea what it is, but it feels, it feels good. Everything about it feels good. Everything feels dense, solid, and, and tight, strong. Uh, all metal here. Your end pieces are metal. Of course, your uh, tension, tension uh, handles are metal. The end piece here is metal. So it's only a small part that really doesn't play a big, big part in the usefulness of the clamp that is uh, metal. And these jaws, again, being whatever this is, I mean, I, I could almost scratch it with my fingernail so you don't have to worry about damaging circuit boards. So I think this is going to be a really good uh, clamp to use on intricate and small stuff. Uh, in, in the ad, I think, showed clamping cell phone uh, circuit boards with this. And so I think that would be a, a really good use for it. But of course, I knew, I never use anything for what it's intended. I use it for whatever I, I want to. So uh, I think that's gonna be a really good deal. But it's gonna be in a uh, roundup with all of the uh, um, circuit board clamps that I've got. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, and last but not least, another soldering iron, which this is a Augum, Augum, maybe, soldering iron, SJ1. I'm not going to really open it up right now. I'm going to open it up and look at it, but I'm not going to do it on, on video in this because that's this is going to be a review. Uh, uh, a quick review let's put it that way like the rest of the soldering irons kind of given some ideas some some first impressions of it opening it up out of the box and trying to use it um, so this will be coming up be on the lookout for it uh, and so I think now I have I have a bunch of soldering irons coming in that were uh, I, they just happened to, to come in uh, you know, pick this item free and this and that and the other and whatever from from Timu and so those will be given away too and giveaways uh, in the the upcoming future. So be on the lookout for those and we'll do a little little review on those as well. Um, and there's a bunch of them of the same type and then there's a a couple of different other types of those uh, as well as a uh, I think it's a set of DMM. Uh, Multimeter tweezers. Uh, I think that might be the first thing I give away. So uh, anyway, be on the lookout for that. Uh, and so another soldering iron. So uh, that's all I've got for right now. I uh, appreciate you spending your your precious time with me. Uh, I thank you, and again I appreciate it. Thanks and God bless.